Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out a Cox regression on uncensored data in Stata. Now what does that mean? Let's start by loading in the data set that Stata uses in its documentation for this procedure. It's called KVA and it's a list of 12 generators here and each one of them has been allowed to run until it fails basically and that's what this variable here is the fail time and we have load and bearings and one thing we want to find out is maybe what impact variables such as these the load and bearings have on the fail time and what we want to do here is generate what's known as a hazard ratio now in order to do that we're going to start by first using the st set command for fail time having done that stata now knows how to treat these data in terms of survival analysis and what we're going to do next we're going to do a cox regression using the st cox command and i'm just going to use bearing here because it's simpler to interpret once you get good with this procedure you can add in covariates and you know um, as many as you like but I think the key here is getting to understand how just one variable works here, understanding it so well that you can apply that principle to future variables when you learn how to add them in. So having run this uh, Cox regression here, what we find is a hazard ratio. Now what's a hazard ratio? A hazard ratio is in comparison to something else. Okay, that's the way to think of it. And with bearing let's do a quick tabulation here and see what it looks like so the variable here says has new bearings and so it's a dummy variable with one meaning that yes it has new bearings and zero meaning that it does not have new bearings so if you think of it as a dummy variable what's going on over here this hazard ratio is a comparison of having new bearings to not having new bearings and we see that when you have new bearings the hazard ratio is a 0.47 so the hazard ratio is much lower in comparison to not having new bearings however it is not significant and another way to tell that not just looking at the p-value you can look at the 95 percent confidence interval and you can see here that uh, one is in that confidence interval so another thing that we can do is we can add a variable in and let's put in load and we see that once we control for uh, for load over here um, bearings become significant so that actually goes to show you that when you're doing a Cox regression adding in covariates can be good because you can find effects that that didn't exist otherwise load here is a little bit harder to interpret because I'm not personally fully sure if this is a genuinely continuous variable or if it's kind of discrete jumps from 15 to 20 and so forth in uh, five point increments. So I would hesitate to interpret that uh, since I don't know whether it's truly a one unit shift or not. Um, but I'm focused in on the variable I was interested in right at first, which is bearings. And now I see that the hazard ratio is, uh, once we've controlled for load, is genuinely below one here. So what that's telling us is that having a uh, having new bearings in there is good because the risk of failure is much less. It's somewhere in this confidence interval as compared to not having new bearings. So our point estimate here says that the risk is only about 6% uh, of failing at any given time in comparison to uh, a machine that has old bearings and that's also counting for load by the way. A couple more things that we want to do here uh, and let me just quickly point out, uh, reiterate here that this approach is not necessarily going to be the same for censored Cox regression in which you have open variables, uh, variables for which failure has not yet taken place. There is another tutorial for that at 272analytics.com, so I suggest you check that out. The next thing we want to do here is run a test of proportional hazards uh, assumption. And what we want is we want this figure to be over 0.05, which it actually is because the null assumption is that proportional hazards exist that's something that we need for the Cox uh, regression to be legitimate and fortunately here that null assumption has not been violated so that's a good thing that's just some housekeeping that you need to do at the end of every Cox regression and if you like using this code that I've, I've, I've posted here you can follow up with a residuals plot 
and in this case I'm just interested in bearing and what you're looking for here is is there a pattern to how the res residuals are you know distributed um, I typically not being a very visual person I do not look at residuals uh, graphs to really tell me much if anything but sometimes uh, professors might want to uh, look at those I prefer just looking at numbers so here I can already report this as indicating that this uncensored Cox regression has in fact met the proportional hazards assumption I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day.